All right, I hope I've given him long enough to wipe the sleep from his eyes. He may not be the most reliable person to tee up for an interview. He left us hanging yesterday, terribly. But he is with us today, and he has a tale to tell. His name is Avi Yemeni. He is a reporter for the, well, some would say alt. I'd just say modern, new, um, rebel news organisation, which has branches all over the world and one in Australia. Just by way of background, folks, Avi and a colleague tried to come here um, for the Brian Tamaki-led protest at Parliament. And he was turned away uh, at the check-in counter in Australia, uh, apparently due to just a normal procedural immigration check by New Zealand. Um, if you've been following the story, you know that there have been a lot of twists and turns in it, and I think we are getting close, or Avi is getting close, to find out what, finding out really why he's not allowed into New Zealand. He joins us on the line from Australia now. Avi, good morning to you. Good morning, Sean, and I apologise to you and your listeners for um, yesterday. Uh, absolutely my, my bad on the uh, times there. That's all right. But here we are. Good on you. Nice to have you with us, Avi. Well, Avi, this has been quite quite the um, the saga. And I want to remind people that, but, that it began with the Prime Minister proclaiming that she had nothing to do with you being turned away from New Zealand and that it was a totally normal procedure that was behind the denial of entry to you as an Australian citizen to come uh, to New Zealand. From what you know now, was that ever the case? Absolutely not. It's uh, clear from the documents that we now have, the communications, um, the unredacted parts of the communications even, that it clearly shows there was a coordinated, um, you know, it, it was an effort between several agencies even before knowing that we were coming. So as soon as that article was published um, in, the, in the New Zealand Herald saying that we might be coming, then a, a bunch of emails between different agencies saying we need to stop these people. Um, and we need help to stop both myself and Rook Sham because, and, and, and the scariest part is, I think, is before they knew we were coming, they note they have a propensity to agitate people with opposing So you views were identified by government agencies as an agitator and undesirable. Exactly. Which government agencies, according to the documents that you've got, Harvey? So there's... There's um, New Zealand Police, New Zealand uh, Immigration are the main two there that, that, that were, the, the communications were between those two organisations. Was any supporting evidence as to that opinion that you are an agitator, which I might add isn't a crime, and it's just an attitude, yeah. um, <laughs> Um, was there any supporting evidence to that or was it just an assumption made by the New Zealand police? Well, they link, they, they keep linking that New Zealand Herald article that was written um, uh, on the Saturday before we were coming, I think because one Chantelle Baker um, said in, in a telegram that uh, she was expecting to see myself and Rukshan there. So it was, it was completely um, relying on this one article. And what, what does it mean, agitating people with opposing views? It's, it's such a ridiculous, undemocratic yeah. reason to ban somebody from a yeah. free country. Now, the Prime Minister insisted to me that this was just an immigration decision. It was because of a conviction you had. That was just complete BS, wasn't it? Um, well, it would certainly seem so. It, it showed me another person in New Zealand's history that got banned from entry before even applying to come. That's, that's what it says in the email. It says, we're not even sure if they're coming, but um, we, we, want, we want to stop them. And uh, if they do uh, come to our border, you, you know, go through the motions, as in you must do the assessment, but the intention is to stop them from coming because of the propensity to um, agitate. agitate people. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. God, I'd never be allowed anywhere if that was a, a ground for restricting people's movements, uh, Harvey. I wouldn't be able to get I, out of bed. I wouldn't be able to get out of bed in the morning, mate. Um, well, it's it's scary because I think anyone with an opposing view um, w- w- could be stopped from travelling anywhere because if a government decides that well, your, your existence agitates, triggers, and you know the the their their particular point of view. Or anyone on their on their side of politics, then then we're just going to restrict movement around the world to protect people's feelings. It, it, it's just mind boggling. Mm. And look, the irony is, I'm pretty sure if you'd come here, you would have been bored out of your skull. It was not very exciting that parliamentary protest. Not much happened. I I, <laughs> I, I tend to agree. It would have been over quite quickly. I probably would have got some, you know. Great interviews with locals. I would have done what I, I was I set out to do, and um, it would have all been over by now. But like I said to you from the beginning, Sean, they've dug this hole and they seem to keep digging. But to, at the end of the day, one day I will um, sit in that studio across from you, and w- we'll certainly um, be there. And and a lot more people are going to know about it, and a lot pe- more people are going to tell their story because uh, they, they've created this buzz around it. Mm. But it is scary. It is, it, it's certainly a scary idea. And I, I encourage your listeners to go and, and read the documents for themselves. Don't take my word for it. At rvlegalfund.com, they can, we've published entire documents. Yeah. Um, and you can see what the, the, the conversations and the way they congratulated each other um, for their great work when I was, you know, in, you see the emails there's somebody giving live reports there and they're congratulating each other that they banned me and they're saying, oh, he's not happy. Yeah. Um, what happens that, next that, that, with that, you legally, Avi? How do you get this ban, which, you know, I personally think is just ridiculous um, and restrictive and kind of fascist. How do you get this ban lifted? Is there a legal channel for you to get past this? Yeah, absolutely. So w- what we need, though, is for... Um, for immigration to uh, to ban an actual visa. So what they've done here is they've refused entry to a visa waiver. Yeah. Um, so right now they're sitting on their desk is the application for the visa with the character assessment and all that. Yeah. Now, for for me to be able to file something in court, um, we need we need an outcome of that. So we're yep. waiting. The, the, the ball's in their, their court. Obviously, they're dragging their feet. I think they're hoping they're hoping this all blows over, but <laughs> um, they, pro- they probably should have spoken to my, my mum and um, they would have found out that it, it doesn't matter. Take, take as long as they legally can. And So your mum it, never said, don't worry about RV, he'll get over it. That never happened, right? <laughs> No, no, that's that's never happened, and it won't happen. And I will, I, I tell you now, I will be there, Sean. I will be there, mm. and it'll it'll either be. I, I do predict at this point, I can't see them um, refusing it. So overturning, I can't see them not overturning this ban because now that I know what I know, I I am certain they don't want this going in front of a judge. Um, because it, it, even what we've got unredacted, we're going to be able to get even more of that unredacted and we're going to be able to put some of those people on the stand. Um, and it is so embarrassing. So I, for now, they know that the ma- mainstream media there is ignoring all of this, no matter how outrageous it is and no matter how much of an attack on their own democracy it is, the mainstream media in New Zealand is ignoring it, pretending it's not happening. Mm. But the minute that, the minute that, that, that they refuse my my um my visa and give me a, an opportunity to take it to court well i want to see them ignore it then it's it's going to it's going to give it all a much bigger platform mm. and and some of the biggest names in um some of the hev- heaviest hitters in, in 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 new zealand immigration and new zealand police are going to be forced to take the stand yeah avi while i've got you there one story we've been covering in the last three or four weeks our Prime Minister's speech to the United Nations in which she disca- she kind of described people talk to, talking to each other on the internet as a weapon of war. 
Mm. And we had to fight it. That made big headlines around the world. Did it get some coverage in Australia? Once again, mainstream media here largely ignored it. Yeah, I think it, 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 it certainly... There was a lot of people talking about that when she said... And, and I, look, you know, you've got to listen to that and you've got to say, sh- sh- when somebody like Jacinda Ardern um, describes the internet as a weapon of war, it, it, it actually... That's what she's done. She's weaponized the internet, and she's she's she wants to control people's, um, you know, people's thoughts and what people are reading, what people are consuming, and if it, um, God forbid, says anything nasty about her and her government, that is a scary hallmark. And here it did; it went off, and I saw it around the world. I, it, 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 most most mainstream publications wouldn't touch it here in Australia as well, but. Thank goodness for the internet. Um, I think that most most of the world saw what Jacinda Ardern said. Yeah. Um, Arvi, thank you very much indeed for your time and delivering eventually. We'll have to come up with a protocol just to... to so I, I, my heart condition doesn't get any worse. Uh, really good talking to you. And I was just actually thinking there as we were talking, Arvi, I was thinking, what would it be if the boot was on the other foot and I was going to Australia to work? And some faceless bureaucrat in Australia said, you're an agitator, you're a troublemaker, you're not allowed here anymore. I'd be bloody outraged, and I don't blame you for being outraged at what New Zealand has has done to you and our officials have done to you. No, I appreciate it, Sean. I appreciate it. Thanks, All right, mate. mate. Take it easy. That is Avi Yemeni uh, from Rebel News. He's based in Melbourne, but he can't get here. Because secretly and surreptitiously, a group of New Zealand bureaucrats, including the police and immigration, targeted him specifically as a guy that shouldn't be here because he agitates. There is no law against agitating. And had he come here, he wouldn't, there was nothing for him to agitate. So well done, New Zealand bureaucrats. You have made Avi Yemeni by your silly attempt to paint him as an enemy of the state, you have made him way more famous in New Zealand than he'd ever be otherwise. And I hope you are held to account. And the Prime Minister has in public pronouncements... Oh, damn it, I'm just going to say she's lied. There's no way she didn't know about what was happening with Avi Yemeni. No way. It beggars belief that she wouldn't have been briefed on that and she certainly would have been briefed by the time she said this was a standard immigration procedure and everyone around her would have known it was not a standard immigration procedure. Unless we are targeting people on false information and acting like fascists, which is entirely possible, isn't it?